This video will show you how to build a multi-level approval workflow for SharePoint 2007 using Visual Studio. This example is built off of the basic approval workflow which you can access from my blog shown here under the How To Video tag. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start by uh, changing the way the uh, expense report document library is set up. I'm going to add a new column for the expense uh, total. If you're using InfoPath, this is not uh, necessary because you can take one of the InfoPath form fields and expose that as the expense total field. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new column here. I'm going to call that expense total. Say that it's a currency field. Say that it's required and the minimum value is going to be zero dollars. And we're going to have two decimal points, decimal places in the in the field. Hit the OK button. Go back to my expense report. And let me go ahead and delete this expense report. And upload it by um, making the expense total uh, field required whenever a user upload updates or uploads the uh, an expense report they're going to be requested to fill in that particular field so go ahead and do the expense report hit OK and when I go to upload it I'll have to fill in the expense report total field now again if you use InfoPath or if you use a custom ASP.NET form this information will automatically be filled in. And you may even be able to do something with Visual Studio tool, Tools for Office to extract that particular value, but that's outside of the scope for, for this particular demonstration. Okay, now that we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and take a, take a look at the workflow. Now before I switch to that, let me just say that the way we're going to do the uh, workflow is uh, for any um, amount below uh, $250, the uh, the uh, the person submitting the workflow only needs a, a single approval. Anything over two hundred and fifty dollars, they need a secondary approval by a higher level manager. And so we'll make the uh, the approval um, amount um, based off of this uh, this this particular SharePoint column called the expense total. So let me switch to Visual Studio now. And again, what I've done is I've taken the uh, basic approval workflow that I built earlier. Um, and I've renamed it multi-level approval and I'll add my uh, code to this one so again you'll be able to get the uh, basic approval uh, workflow from my uh, my site and I will uh, have a complete code download within this one for uh, the multi-level workflow so here was the basic approval workflow a, um, in this case a, after a user submits their uh, work their expense report um, the SharePoint site would kick off the workflow create an approval task for a manager and then um, once that that task was defined it would create it using this activity we'd wait for the work for the uh, manager to uh, approve or disapprove the uh, or reject the, the uh, expense report and then based off of that that result we would either send out a uh, approval email or a rejection email to the to the person submitting it and so what we're going to do now is we're going to add an additional um, series of workflow activities that will evaluate the um, the expense total amount from the SharePoint column and then uh, escalate the uh, expense report to a second level of approval. So let's start by adding a uh, activity that will encode that will allow us to get the uh, the uh, expense total column from the SharePoint list since that's the uh, the value that we will decide whether or not we need to go to a second level of approval or not on. So I'm going to grab a uh, code activity here and I'm going to drop it right here after the uh, first uh, task for the first approval has been um, been completed. I'm going to put in some code to get the uh, expense amount here. So we'll call this activity get expense amount. I'm going to go ahead and add the, the code here. Let's go full screen. Full screen. Here we go. So let's go full screen here. 
So the first thing I'll do is I'll add a uh, global variable, a class level variable, I should say, to hold the expense uh, total amount. I'll make this a decimal. I'll call it uh, expense total. And then here in the code of activity, we'll go ahead and copy and paste our code in here. I'll go ahead and explain what this does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, in the using a string value, I'm going to grab the uh, the uh, the value in the expense total uh, column in the SharePoint list. It'll come with a dollar sign uh, on it uh, because it's a currency field in the SharePoint con uh, SharePoint list. So I'll need to strip off the uh, dollar sign if it if it exists, and then uh, store the decimal value of that into the expense total report, uh, field. All right, so let's switch back to our workflow here. So now that we have the expense amount, we're going to go ahead and use that in a uh, if-else block to decide whether or not we need to have a secondary approval or not. And so I'm going to go ahead and grab a uh, if-else activity. I'm going to drop it right here uh, after my get expense amount activity. And we're going to call that if-else block uh, requires secondary approval and on the left side of that block uh, if a secondary uh, approval is required um, we'll, we'll call this one the secondary required and then the right hand side we'll call this secondary not required and then to define the secondary required uh, if else side uh, we're going to go ahead and use a declarative rule condition And go ahead to the condition name. These are from the uh, uh, basic approval workflow. So I'm going to create a new one here. And what we'll say is uh, if this uh, expense total column is greater than some arbitrary amount, and we're, we're going to choose $250 decimal in this case. If it's above that amount, and we'll call this one the... Um, requires secondary approval check. If it's above the $250, then it'll have to go down the secondary uh, required uh, side of the if-else. If not, then it'll go down the uh, secondary not required. So for the secondary required uh, portion of the if-else block, we're going to send the task out to a higher level manager and ask them to approve the, uh, the expense report or reject it. And what we're going to do, do is we're going to use a uh, uh, create task with content type activity to do that. So that's how we're going to define the, the task. So I'm going to drag that activity. We're going to call this one uh, create secondary approval task. It needs a co correlation token. The primary, the, the one from the uh, the video I did on building a basic approval workflow has a correlation token called primary approval token. So we're going to call this one secondary approval token. And since I'm going to use a custom ASP.NET form, uh, let me assign the ownership here to the workflow. Since we're going to use a uh, custom content type uh, and a, uh, a, uh, the same ASP.NET form that we sent out to the primary approver, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the content I ID for that ASP.NET form and custom content type. So again, you can look at the earlier video um, that I'll have a link for the uh, link to in this video as well to that earlier video if you if you'd like to to see see how I built that. So I'm going to use the same content type ID. The next thing I need to do is get a task ID for this particular this new task. So I'm going to go to Tools and create GUID. I'm going to copy this uh, ID, close that, paste it in there. So now we have a new content type, a, a task ID. And then the last thing I need to do is bind my task property. So I'll click here, bind it to a new field. 